likes that. Mm, it should be nice and cooling, I think. Nice red and cream on your snozzer. Okay. Okay. Carry out that. Does that feel good? Um, so these guys here at the moment um, have a few different things going on. Um, so we are keep treating them with pain relief. Um, so to keep them uh, every day they're getting pain relief, all of these guys are. Uh, we're also treating them for s severe burns on a few of them, minor burns on others. Uh, so they're getting uh, some burn cream, so blunzine cream, uh, gel pads to keep it nice and moist and then bandage to keep their hands nice and clean um, from dirt and things like that. Uh, these guys we are treating with some burn cream, um, which is to try and hopefully help all those little pads and noses and everything heal up. Put some on your little hand there, sweetie. Um, so this girl at the front here, we are very lucky, she only has minor burns to her hands. Uh, so all four of her hands currently are not too bad, um, and hopefully this cream should help cool it down and heal it for her. Here we go. Uh, all three of the koalas that are in here at the moment all came from uh, pretty much a 20 metre, 20 square metre area. Um, so we're very lucky. They did have quite a few come in there which have been uh, more than able to be treated, which is very, very good. Hey, sweetie, how's that? You got some on your nose still? Okay. Unfortunately, the main area that the fires were in is the main habitat of our koala population. Um, we we can't even really give any accurate estimates now of, of what we think's happened. Um, but we have people out on the ground that um, are saying to every live koala they're finding, they're finding at least 100 dead. So we're looking at very big numbers. Um, I was thankful to see that um, in some of the plantation photographs that the fire hadn't reached the canopy. So that's a positive thing if the animals survived. It still has food and, um, you know, unless it's been affected by smoke inhalation, it probably has a, a good chance. Um, so no, no chance now to give any sort of accurate um, estimation of, of what's happened, but it's, it's going to be huge. Yeah. So moving forward, um, it's just really important that the animals are managed the most humanely as possible. So um, critical care probably isn't an option for us. Um, so we look at um, assessing animals and their viability and then also their habitat that is potential to re-release them once they've recovered. Um, so we have to look at all of those things when we're assessing animals. It's not just about um, saving them. We have to have a long-term plan. We have to have an end plan for them and we have to have a place for them to go. So, so there's a lot of questions that we're asking when we're assessing animals. And um, so we're, we're setting up a recovery center and we have hundreds of volunteers that are offering their help and I've got people coordinating that as we speak. Um, we're all a little bit overwhelmed, um, basically by generosity, but um, yeah, just trying to keep on top of stuff. And yeah, so we're gonna save what we can and make sure that the, um, the long-term outcome for, for any animal, I know we're talking about koalas now, but um, our kangaroo is such an iconic species um, and we love them, um, all of our wallabies and we may have lost our bandicoot and done our populations that were already under threat. The glossy black habitat is um, over 50% of that is gone and there's been a recovery program with people working and they were recovering and now I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Take, take a moment. Take yeah. a moment. Yep, yep. Take so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, and I'm not taking away from the human impact. Um, all of my friends have lost homes and their farms, um, but I have to focus on one, one thing at the moment, and um, my soul mates are my animals, and um, this environment has been completely, completely changed and I don't know that it will ever, ever come back and be the same. We're talking about critical care, what kind of injuries are we seeing on these? What are the main injuries? So I guess if we're talking about critical care, we're talking about severe third degree burns, 
um, you know, fluid treatment and that where you need an actual hospital. Um, again, we're having to make very tough decisions on the fire ground about whether critical care is the best option because we don't want to be saving animals that may long term not be viable when we do have animals that we know are viable. So um, I guess I just want to ask people to be respectful of the decisions that people are having to make on the fire grounds because no one is making any decision about wildlife euthanasia lightly at all. One, one positive story, echidnas are incredibly resilient. They can bury themselves and stay for days under the hot ground. And they seem to have some sort of sense of when it's okay for them to come out and they can just dig their way out and it might just be their spines that are burned and then they can just go about their business. So, so they're kind of a feel good animal for bushfires um, as long as it wasn't too quick and they could prepare to get under the ground. Um, but yeah, it, uh, my feeling is, is that a lot of the fires were very hot and fast and um, the only consolation that any of us cling to is that hopefully those losses were quick and, you know, just quick, yeah. I was just do the best we can. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just hurts us. Oh, okay. yeah. Are you going to need to take that blanket back? No, okay. You can have it. You have others. You have others. Yeah. Are you sure you have enough? Yeah, don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty strong. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah. You go ahead. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Please don't hold me, you do like it, you're right. Okay.